Hey everyone, John Cullen here. Cullen and a curler time. I'm here at the West Coast Classic with Ben Hebert. At age 29, Ben Hebert already has a resume that most curlers would die for. A world junior champion in 2003, Hebert first represented Saskatchewan at back-to-back -back Briars in 2005 and 2006. In 2007, Hebert moved to Alberta to form arguably the greatest curling team of all time with Kevin Martin, John Morris, and Mark Kennedy. Together, the rink has won over 30 WCT events, 9 Grand Slams, famously went undefeated for two straight Briars, won a world championship, and then capped it off in 2010 with an Olympic gold medal on home soil. Oh, and for a little bit, his hair looked like that. Whoops. Now, Ben, you are the uh, the 2010 Olympic gold medalist, and uh, I just wanted to know: is it uh, has it been hard the last couple of years getting motivated? Because really, I think a lot of curlers think that the Olympics is kind of the the top of the mountain. So, has it been hard for you guys the last couple of years to get motivated, or? Uh, we like to pretend like it hasn't been hard for us to get motivated, yeah. but you can see by our dwindling winning percentage that yeah, it's been a little bit hard to get motivated. But you still want to win. And now that we're getting back into uh, Olympic mode here for 2014, we got to turn it up a notch and start uh, catching the teams that have passed us the last few years here. Fair enough. So, what are some of those teams that you're that you see as kind of coming up and challenging for your crown? Uh, Mike McEwen, very good team. They were kind of weren't even around the last trials. Kevin Cooey's team's getting a lot better. Glenn's team, you think they'd be getting shittier because he's a hundred. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But he's money. He's getting he's better. He's getting better as he gets older. So you know, there's still lots of good teams. Jeff's team's great. Uh, I'm probably going to miss someone. I don't know. There's so many good teams out there. And, uh, you know, sure. we, we took a lighter schedule the last couple of years. Yep. And so we need to turn it up a notch these next two years. Fair enough. Yeah, nice. Um, so after the Olympics, I know that uh, you get a lot of interesting requests, media requests, sponsor requests, that kind of thing. What was the weirdest request that you got post-2010 Olympics for something that your team was supposed to do or wanted to do? Uh, weird? I don't want to say weird because there was just a whole bunch of things that we did do, like, we did a whole bunch of speaking events. Yeah. We did a whole bunch of, uh, you know, I did a whole bunch of high schools and elementary schools in Regina because I'm from there. Yeah. You know, John did the same thing. He was still having a mark. But I think weird stuff, like a girlfriend that I dated in high school asked me to go see her grandma at her grandma's old folks' home. <laughs> There's nothing really weird about that besides the fact that she was my ex-girlfriend and I didn't really want to do it. Yeah, of course. Did you do it? No. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Great. So uh, you are very active on Twitter. That's uh, one of your, you've got, I think, about 2,900 followers now. Benny Hebes, you're there. Uh, one thing I, uh, I did notice on Twitter, though, is uh, you interact with uh, Jordan Eberly a lot. You want to tell, how do you know him? Jay Ebbs. Uh, Jordan's from Regina. Yeah. So I did a couple charity events with him in 2009 after we won the Worlds. Yeah. Oh, no, we lost the Worlds. 2008? I don't know. One of those years, and then 2010, we kind of just became buddies. We were both living in Regina. We won the Olympics. He was a superstar in the Pats. Got to know him just since. I mean, he's seven years younger than me, right? He's like a kid. But he lives in Calgary. He's a good golfer. We like to battle each other in golf. So we play golf together. We actually work out at the same gym. Oh, nice. So I work out with Jordan in the mornings and then afternoons when I am when I take a uh, field day from work. Yeah. We golf together and stuff. Yeah, he's a good buddy. He's a beauty. Good kid. And, you know, got a lot more money than, than we do. Put yeah, no kidding. Oh, put together yeah, times. And all of our buddies put together. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah, what's uh, what do you sign? Six point one, I think he signed for. I don't know. Too much. Too, oh. You need a loan? Call him. Yeah, way too much. Ridiculous. So, um, I, I, he actually tweeted at you. I noticed uh, about a month ago that he wanted you to come over and sweep his house. He was he for curling. Like, we go to the gym. He's strong. Like, he's little. He's strong. Yeah. But like, I'm bigger than him. I dust him in sprints. Dust him. He'd never. He'd never deny it either. I dust him in sprints. So I was just beaking him a little bit. I don't know what he was chirping about on Twitter. I just replied to something, beaked him a bit. Yeah. And instead of acknowledging what I said to him, he goes straight for the heart, straight for the gut, yeah. and he goes after the curling. I thought that was soft. Come over and sweep yeah, your floor. floor. Yeah. Dick move. Yeah. That's what he does. He's, nah, he's, he's 22. 23? Yeah. Nah, whatever. Yeah. That's what I do too, I think. Um, so sometimes, though, I do think on Twitter, you tweet some things, and I don't understand at all what you're saying. Like, do you ever... I can explain yeah, to you. Okay. Yeah, that's what I... So I have one example now. This was about your, your hometown Regina Rams. Yeah. Okay, and uh, someone tweeted at you, I think the reporter for the Rams had tweeted at you that they were ahead by quite a bit. And you tweeted back, it's because Mark Mueller, at Mark Mueller 14, was throwing bombs. Hashtag Danny Mac. Hashtag bag of milk. Hashtag no wheels. Hashtag huge cannon. Yeah. Okay, Mark Mueller, quarterback for the Regina Rams. Yeah. Beauty dude. And he, uh, I'm a good buddy of his. I've done a few radio shows with him in Regina. 
and that is Mar or I'm sorry, Ronnie Lancaster's. Uh, gr that's his grandpa. Oh, okay. So uh, you know, a great quarterback, big name in Regina, funniest, funniest dude ever. Yeah. Just a beauty, and he's a little short, little fat, little dude. Huge arm. Yeah. Awesome quarterback. He actually might win the CIS MVP this year. Okay. I've been following him a little bit, and I keep tabs on how the Rams are doing just because I'm from there. I played a little bit of junior football back in the day. I say Danny Mac because he gets compared to Dan, Danny McManus because okay. he's kind of short, big arm, a little bit soft, okay. no wheels because he can't run, bag of milk because that's what his body's like, a bag of milk. Okay. It's either bag of milk or waterbed. I got the same, <laughs> I got the, I got the same body. I, I just chirp at him. It's funny, right? A fat guy being, making fun of a fat guy. And, uh, yeah, huge cannon, big arm, yeah. awesome quarterback. Great, great guy. I just like to chirp him. We did a couple of radio shows together, yeah. and we had a great time. And now he has his own little show in Regina. He does. I always uh, tweeted him that I listen to his stuff, but he's a beauty. Nice. Yeah, I was the. <laughs> those, are, those are friendly chirps. Oh, friendly, I, I, oh, I knew they were friendly chirps. I just we were sitting there like bag of milk. What is that even? I like waterbed too. Yeah, waterbed. Your, your feed bag. Yeah. A bag of milk. <laughs> pretty good. It's pretty good. So uh, now I've, I was thinking about this as well. You, um, I, I just got a scenario for you. So imagine the scenario. So you're you're 70. You're chilling on the porch. You're sitting around with Johnny Moe, Mark Kennedy, reminiscing about the old times. Kevin's dead. Kevin's dead. Yeah, Kevin's he's 103 by then. Yeah, Kevin's dead. dead. Kevin's dead. dead. Who has the most hair? Uh, well, definitely not me. I'm going bald. My dad's bald as hell, and I am already got some power alleys going on. I just keep it high and tight just because when I go bald, it's not such a drastic move for me. Yeah. John's got a John, – John has to have the most hair because if he, even if he goes bald, he'll just take the hair off his eyebrows. <laughs> Or his chest. chest. No, he runs a tight, shaven chest. Mark can't grow hair anywhere on his body except he has got a good full of hair. And Mark's been married a long time, so he doesn't he doesn't do a lot of manscaping anymore. He could go down there and get some some <laughs> hair, but Johnny keeps it pretty well man bodied. Yeah, I've I've seen it in the in the locker room. It look, but it looks like it would be if he let it go. Could be I don't know too much of a ladies' man. He, like I live on the same street as John, yeah. so he does a lot of walks around the. Uh, the block sh shirtless, so he has to keep the shirt the course, shape. So Do you think when he's seventy, he will still be maintaining the chest shaving? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I could see that too as well. Um, okay, so last question before we get to confirm or deny. Um, I noticed on Twitter uh, there's been a lot of feedback about the Ryder Cup and and in relation to the Continental Cup. And you've probably played in the most Continental Cups, most likely your team probably or close to anyway. Um, and there was a lot of talk about how the the Continental Cup needs to change to be more passionate, like like the Ryder Cup. What do you think are some things that the Continental Cup could do to maybe make it a little more exciting for the viewers? Well, you could put some money in it. Yeah. Like, there's no money if you win or lose. You win or lose, you pay for, like, 500 bucks. Not like there isn't pride. You still want to win. Yeah. But, like, we play – if you're playing for big money, guys are going to be busting their balls. Right. Playing for peanuts, we're going to have some beers, we're going to have fun. And if we win, we win. We lose, we lose. I shouldn't say that. Like, we still want to win. Yeah, still, but, but it's a fun event for us. You get the team up. It's a different event. You get to play with some gals. You get to play with other, other teams that you battle all year long. Right. So you try to make it as fun as you can. Yeah. Last year, I got just spared last year for yeah. Selton's team. Great time. It was love to play with some new dudes. Me and Wayne, my dog, did a shot of ride before every game. Nice. It was beautiful. I maybe shouldn't say that. but <laughs> no, so th no, we didn't do it that. Yeah. Wayne did. Oh, yeah. Well, of course he did. Yeah, I mean, that's... Wayne's a veteran, though. Veteran. That's a veteran move. <laughs> it's a very veteran move. Okay, so we're going to move on to a little segment I like to call Confirm or Deny. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to ask you questions, just simple point-blank questions, and you're just going to confirm or deny the question. Like okay, it. perfect. So here we go. First question. You have used your Olympic gold medal to get something. Oh, confirmed. What? Uh, into bars. That works. You've actually shown your gold medal at the bar? Oh, yeah. Well, when we first after we won, we went to Halifax for the Briar. We weren't playing in the Briar. Kevin Cooley represented that year. We went to a bar, and there was a 30-person lineup. We all had our gold medals with us. Flash them at the door. Zing. VIP. Roped off area. It was awesome. That's amazing. Okay, confirm or deny John Morris has used his gold medal to get into more things or do more things than you. 100%. Carries his probably 50% of the time still. It's two years later. <laughs> where does he carry it? Oh, truck, console. I don't know. I don't know where he does it. But Johnny Mo, Johnny Mo uses he, – he's Johnny Mo. Yeah. He doesn't even need his gold medal. He just – takes it with him because he knows everyone will be like, oh, I'm John Morris. So he's like, oh, here's the goods. <laughs> so if you go into John Morris's truck right now, there's probably a 50% chance his gold medal's in the truck. Wrapped around a deer that he hunted last week. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. He was showing the pictures like the bow and arrow, like right through the deer on his phone. Hunting guru. Loves his hunting. 
insane. Yeah, okay, cool. I like that. So um, confirm, deny, John Morris has used his Olympic gold medal to pick up women. Lots. He was single at the Olympics. Yeah, single. Yeah, not now. I know he's got a girlfriend now, but girlfriend. Sing, but single at the Olympics. Did you, did you see that happen? Lady killer. Anyway, but with the gold medal, did you th see another level? Yeah, monster lady killer. Yeah. The best. Awesome. But now he found one and he can't get rid of her. She's a nice girl, so now he's now he's just like the rest of us, boring. Yeah, he seems to. Yeah, he seems to like her a lot. He's just more good looking, but he's still now he's boring and good looking. Yeah. Right? Fair, yeah. Fair enough. What is uh, maybe you can share? What's your best John Morris story from the road that you've seen? That 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 you can that you can share. If it's bad, we'll cut it out. Um, that I can share. Oh, I don't want to get kicked off my team. He's the one that makes me the money, eh? <laughs> Fair call. Yeah, deny. Yeah, just deny it. We can just deny it. Yeah, just you can take a veto there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You've never seen him ever. You've never. Seen, there you go. Yeah. We we can go with that. Yeah. Okay. Last one. Confirm. Deny. You are the best curling tweeter. Oh, I don't know. There's some good ones. I like it. Like the thing I love about Twitter is you can be yourself. Yeah. And the people that don't like me and don't want to follow me, they don't got to follow me. The people that do follow me, if I was being boring and lame, they'd be like, "Who the hell is this guy?" I just tweet pretty much who I am and I say I've noticed that I say the things that I want to say and it's not it's good it's not good or bad some people like it some people don't but oh there's lots of good curling tweeters I love I love following lots of the guys on tour and they're pretty funny but I don't know if I can't say I'm the best but okay. there's lots of good guys out there that are pretty funny I just like the funny guys to be honest with you for sure so who's who's some of the curlers you would put on your on your top list there Nolan Thiessen's pretty good uh, only because he likes the same things as I do right. tweets about baseball things like that so I love I like following Nolan who else is good Mark Kennedy, but he tweets once every three months. He has some pretty good ones. Yeah. We're slowly teaching Kevin how to tweet. I saw, that. I saw you taught him. Hashtags he, he, he dropped the uh, WTF today on, or on Twitter. That was pretty good. Who else is good? Savile's good. Mike McEwen, he's too by the book. Don's got him by the balls. Oh, he yeah. Yeah. Here's a picture of my food. Yeah, I don't want food tweets. Let's see, let's see the goods. Savile's good. Wayne Madaw's funny. Yeah. But he's always tweeting about his big boats and his lakes and his Corvettes. I can't keep up with that. Take a picture of my shed. So that's just not good. <laughs> It's not as good. And I notice uh, sometimes on Twitter you use some pretty aggressive language. Have you ever got any backlash for that? Oh, yeah. I got hate tweeters lots. Yeah. yeah what are you going to do? Like I said the same thing. I swear. Yeah. I'm not by the Bible. I love Jesus. I'm just not. You know, I swear sometimes. Yeah. That's and, you know, I very rarely swear. I sometimes I drop a F-A-C-K. Yeah. Or a, or a F-U-G-G. -G, fuggin. Yeah. Right? Just that's to true. try to keep it a little bit clean because I'm sure I got a few grandmas out there following me because I am a curler. True. But for the most part, they're my buddies, a lot of friends, a lot of curling, and they just know, yeah, Ben is about, but I say it in good fun. Yeah. I'm a good person. I just tweet for fun. I like, I like, if I was a boring tweeter, I wouldn't have any followers. That's true. Right. So what's the most aggressive hate tweet that you've got? All the hate tweets I usually get are either from my buddies just burning me, yeah. which is fair. But I've, me and Mark and John have got some good ones about curling. Like uh, last year, we didn't win the provincials for the first year. So we got, you know, people sending at us. We obviously don't follow them. Yeah. Saying, uh. So nice to not see them in the briar. They're boring, blah blah blah. They're, they're just, you know, just, just shit. Yeah, that's, that's pretty. That's aggressive. That's pretty that's mean. Like, happy to not see us, but that's the way it goes. When you win, don't people don't want to see you win? They like to cheer for the underdogs. That's the way it goes. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, last question. Uh, confirmed, deny. You have the worst intern on the tour. Oh, confirmed. <laughs> How, like when your out turns ninety-seven, do you need an intern? <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> That's a great question. Okay, thanks so much for joining us, Ben. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we had a great time. This has been Cullen and a curler. Take care. Thanks.